Welcome to the Neurology Channel, your go-to source for all things related to neurology and brain health. Today we have a significant topic to explore, succinylcholine. Whether you're a patient, a caregiver, or simply interested in neurological treatments, you're in the right place. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss our latest updates. Succinylcholine, also known as succimethonium, is a medication with a vital role in anesthesia and emergency medicine. In this video, we'll dive into what succinylcholine is, how it works, its applications, and why it's important in the field of neurology. What is succinylcholine? Let's start with the basics. Succinylcholine. Succinylcholine is a neuromuscular blocking agent or a muscle relaxant. It's used to induce rapid and temporary muscle paralysis during medical procedures and emergencies. How it works. Succinylcholine's mechanism of action is fascinating and unique. It acts as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So, what does depolarizing neuromuscular blocker mean? Normal muscle contraction. Under normal circumstances, when a nerve signal reaches a muscle, it triggers the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine binds to muscle cell receptors, leading to muscle contraction. Prolonged stimulation. Succinylcholine mimics acetylcholine's action by binding to the same receptors. However, it doesn't just activate them briefly. It causes a prolonged stimulation of the muscle cell. Persistent depolarization. This prolonged stimulation results in persistent depolarization of the muscle cell membrane, rendering it temporarily unresponsive to further nerve signals. Muscle paralysis. As a result, the muscle becomes paralyzed and the patient experiences temporary and controlled muscle relaxation. Depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. Succinylcholine is classified as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. This sets it apart from other non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. Normal muscle contraction. In a typical muscle contraction, a nerve signal reaches a muscle, leading to the release of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Activation of muscle contraction. Acetylcholine binds to receptors on muscle cell membranes, initiating muscle contraction by depolarizing the muscle cell. Succinylcholine's mimicry. Succinylcholine mimics the action of acetylcholine by binding to the same receptors on muscle cell membranes. However, it doesn't act briefly like acetylcholine. Prolonged stimulation. When succinylcholine binds to muscle cell receptors, it causes prolonged stimulation of these receptors. Unlike acetylcholine, which triggers a brief response, succinylcholine maintains the depolarization of the muscle cell membrane. Persistent depolarization. This persistent depolarization results in the muscle cell membrane becoming temporarily unresponsive to further nerve signals. Muscle paralysis. As a consequence, the muscle experiences temporary paralysis. The patient is unable to contract the muscle voluntarily during this time. Rapid onset and short duration. Succinylcholine has a rapid onset of action, inducing muscle relaxation within seconds of administration. Its effects are also relatively short-lived, making it suitable for brief medical procedures. Applications in medicine. Succinylcholine is commonly used for various medical purposes. Facilitating endotracheal intubation. It is employed to facilitate the insertion of a breathing tube into the patient's airway during emergencies or surgeries, ensuring proper ventilation. Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Succinylcholine is used in ECT to prevent severe muscle contractions during the procedure, which could otherwise result in injuries. Rapid muscle relaxation. It is used in scenarios where immediate short-term muscle paralysis is necessary for medical interventions. Administration and monitoring. Administering succinylcholine is a controlled process. Intravenous, IV injection. Succinylcholine is typically administered via IV injection. The dosage and monitoring are closely supervised by healthcare providers to ensure patient safety. Considerations and precautions. When using succinylcholine, several considerations and precautions are essential. Prolonged paralysis. Succinylcholine's effects can be prolonged in individuals with genetic predispositions or certain medical conditions. Careful patient assessment is crucial. Risk of hyperkalemia. Succinylcholine can trigger an increase in blood potassium levels, potentially leading to life-threatening complications. Monitoring is essential, especially in patients with a risk of hyperkalemia. In conclusion, succinylcholine is a remarkable medication in neurology, anesthesia, and emergency medicine. Its unique mechanism of action allows for rapid and controlled muscle paralysis, making it indispensable in situations where immediate paralysis is necessary. Thank you for joining us on the Neurology Channel. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others who might benefit, and don't forget to subscribe for more valuable insights into the world of neurology and brain health. Stay well and take care.